Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do um, another video to help you out along the way with AMS2. Uh, thanks to all the new subscribers and all the comments, all the feedback, it's been great. Um, so just to keep the party rolling, I'm going to get some more settings to help you out. Today is going to be a quick one, hopefully. Um, we're going to mainly touch on custom force feedback and out of setup an online lobby so you can go and race with all your friends speaking of which uh blatant plug bongo racing um go and check these guys out i'll put a link in description um we've got a nice little community going on there robin he's awesome he's jumping between acc ams2 lmu but there's um quite a few of us in the discord now that are on there nearly every night playing AMS2, so if you want to jump in and come and have some fun, we're just getting things sorted and then we'll get some races going. But anyway, um, like I said, thanks to all the new subscribers. Um, can't believe how well it's been going. Um, anybody would be worried that you might start getting a big head. Sorry, I am an absolute child. But talking about big heads, I noticed that Gamer Muscle has his headphones. He's got the same headphones as me all the way up there. So my head can't be that big. But just to mention him, he dropped a video going on about the custom force feedback setting. And that's what I'm going to be showing today. Um, he talked about the Rack Force one. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. It takes away um, a lot of the FX. The rumble strips, the curves, the road feel, but it really connects you to the wheel, the car, the handling, the control. I've been finding it. I had a play with it last night, and I've been finding, like, I can catch spins and just have a general more knowledge of what's happening with the car. It's up to you. Um, one of the guys in chat was talking about, Roger, was talking about how maybe bigger, better wheelbases would be able to handle both but for me on the eight newton meter csl getting rid of um all the things that numb down the steering i think i prefer it but you can play around with it but that's why i like this game because it gives you the ability to try these things out so let's have a look i've got them by here just to show you how easy it is to um drop these in and out of the game so i've got a couple of customs here i'll put the details for this rack force one in description but uh, a few of these other ones like i've got one here for the csl um i'll put a link to where i think they came from it's the the riser website on the forum there's loads of guys there's they're just banging them out left and right but anyway, let's get the game. What we need is you go into your file explorer, you go to documents, go to automobilista 2, and there it is there. That's the file, Faster, cut, FFB custom settings. If you have a look in there, this is the rack force. This is all you need to do. So I'll show you. If you come in here, the standard one will have uh, lines and lines and lines of code written in there. So that's all you would need to do. I put a link in the description for these four lines. It's pretty easy. But just go in here, right click, select all, delete, then with this one, it seems a bit pointless to me deleting the same one and put it back in, but you can do this with anything. So just copy it all and paste it in. And that's it. Simple. It's in. So what I would strongly suggest is before you go doing that is back up whatever one you've got in there, if you prefer that, if you like that. So at any time, if you don't like this one, just drop it, that one in. Like the same with the CSLDD one. 
All I do with that one, drag it across, drop it in there, replace the file in destination. Job done. Now I've got that one in. And just to show you, that's all the code of text there. And it's just loads and loads and loads. Yeah. But again, just quickly, if you don't want all that in there, just select all, delete. Get the other one up. Because I do like this rack force. So I'm going to stick with this. Copy it all. And paste it in there. That's it. Simple. Save that. All right. That's pretty easy. So if we open up the game. we wait for the game right so here we are we've landed again you just go into options go to controls go to your force feedback and there it is so i said before about using default and default plus in the game after the update they were much better much improved but now we're back into the custom feedback force feedbacks and this is where i've landed so I dropped that one in the rack force. The FX slider does nothing now. I don't think so. I've got it on 100 and it does. It gets rid of a lot of the, the curbs, the bumps. But you still will get some through the suspension, through the steam rack. Because this rack force one, that's all it does. is gives you through the wheel all the forces that would come from the steering rack of the car. Um, the dampness slider, I've got that all the way off. Menu spring. And the low force boost, I've turned that off. Um, I've got my gain at 76 I've done the telemetry HUD, had a look, clipping. I was clipping at 80, I wasn't at 75, I've gone for 76. You can play with it. Again, the limp wristed among you might want it lower, it's up to you. But I really do like this now. Uh, the, the feelings that you're getting, um, I just, you just know what the car's doing. It's simple. Like, if you want the nice, fx and all the extra force feedback like that many people do then yeah but i think like roger said for the the the, the bigger wheelbases the better wheelbase i think he's got the simi cube pro too much money whatever it's called 25 newton his wheelbase has got the scope it's got the headroom to be able to give you all the extra damping effects the curbs and all that as well as still feel the car so he's gone back to that which was like that other one that I showed you. But this one is literally just the just the the rack, the steering rack of the car. So hope that helps you out there. It's simple, easy. And then the other one I just wanted to touch on today was creating a multiplayer session for you and your friends, for you and your pals. Obviously you can go online and join a race. Easy enough. There you go. That's everything that's available to you. Click your filter, search for what you want to do, and off you go. But what we're doing in the evening is having a bit of fun, creating our own lobbies. And there's a bit of a nuance about the settings for this, so I'm going to show you all what you need to do. So first of all, click down your Create Multiplayer Session. This is the page you'll come to. The first thing is actually setting up the host services, the settings. So this is where you name your lobby and up a lowercase matter here. So I'll just put GB in, lowercase. And then you put a password on it. So if you don't want any randoms joining, just you and your mates, put a password in. We'll go 13. We will go 13. Give them the, the lobby name, and they'll have to put the password in to get in. You then want to set it at public. Um, private would only be, you could only invite people in. 
but this way they can search for it themselves or you can do the invite both ways broadcast is if you want to do commentary and things like that so people can just observe instead of racing wait for race ready input it's pretty simple this will give you the pre-race screen before each session so you can do uh, your setups change your fuel change your tires all that kind of thing if you don't have that on it'll just skip into the next session so you need that one on an auto advanced session once the race is over gives you a cool down lap and then on you go so then you save that realism settings right now this is where you can force people you can get rid of the stability control abs t traction control oh dry throw it again so this is where you enforce those kind of settings for your lobby yeah you can put where's the one you can freak people out and chuck random failures on without telling them <laughs> if you want to be sneaky that'll go down well damage type we've only got it uh, visual only we're bumping and banging we're learning the new cars we're learning the new tracks so your car will look crumpled but you can carry on there's no actual mechanical damage so we've got all the tcs and abs allowed just make sure that one's off because you know somebody will come in and they'll look like god the reincarnation of senna because stability control will keep them going when the skill level runs out all right so save that so that's that <coughs> the next important one sorry the next important one is if you go into the impo the opponents um if you keep this on same class you don't have to pick a cut and then every time you race and you go back to the lobby instead of having to come all the way out the game it'll give you all the cars to choose from whereas if you pick a class like force everybody to be in the same car as you you have to then choose the car and then when you finish the race you'd have to go back out and come back in again so just leave it on same class then you can change the cars every time you come in and out so this is your maximum grid size 32 is the max at the moment fill you can fill it with ai increase their ability yeah you get it but that's the main one keep it on same class then you can go into your session settings so do you want a practice session yes or no if you do that's the duration this is another important one make sure you change this it always defaults to midnight so if you've got people that are upset with the darkness get rid of it there we are time progression weather slots make sure if uh if you leave it on real weather it could be raining it could be this could be that get rid of it so put a weather slot in and then you can pick what the weather is if you want to put rain in then you can all agree on it happy days but don't be accidentally surprised by real weather giving you a soaking wet track and then this is another important one default progression this is the the track state of the track so just put it on heavy rubber and then you'll all be having a great amount of grip instead of bam beyond ice all right so there you go very simple and same for qualifying same thing on or off and then you get the same choices it's copied it over look so once you've done the practice session it have it's brought it along okay so you save those job done and then race settings this can be completely different but again you need to watch for the weather sorry that's time progression the weather is copied over make sure it's not on real weather choose your, your weather type and then this is another one uh choose your start type we've found that um obviously not playing the game for that long jumping in new cars the super powerful ones 
some people can't quite get off the line tidy and uh, there's lots of death before T1. So if that's the case, we haven't quite got the grips of the cars yet. Put on rolling start, you know? And then you can choose whether to have a full formation lap or just up around the corner and start, okay? That's what this one's for. Obviously, pit stop refueling, mandatory pit. You can force those if you want. It's up to you. Schedule full course yellow. Change it up a bit. Somebody's disappeared off into the distance. You can rein them back in a bit by chucking out the yellow and everybody having to catch back up. And again, live preset, track, live track preset. Keep it on heavy rubber. There you go. And then rules and penalties. Very simple. Track limit penalties on. You can have as many as you want. Cheaters going to cheat as they do. So if you want to rein those boys in, keep it on three, five, whatever. But the more you get, the more people can cut corners without getting a penalty. Drive through penalties on. Pit exit penalty on. This is a good one. You're going to adjust the uh, pit speed limit. So if you keep getting caught out by that one, just whack it up there. You're doing well to hit 200 by the time you go out the pits. Oh, T's going down well. Anyway, they're all pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, there's a couple in there that you need to keep an eye on, depending on how triad the rest of the boys in your lobby are. All right? And that's it. So you picked your car. Let's go in. Yeah, we've got select the livery. Oh, yeah, we got the just a quick shout out. Whale Nap Designs got some skins going. I'll put a link in the description for you to go and have a look at these, but check them out. I do love this garage showroom thing. Look at the detail on that. You can even see the weave in the carbon. Even with my relic of a PC, this looks amazing. Anyway, there you go. So you pick your car, job done, off you go. Yeah, I know. That's the other thing. If you download skins for this game and you force them in identical, if put the, the opponent's time is identical, if other people don't have the DLC, they won't see your skin. And same if you went on an online, like LFM or whatever. I'm pretty sure that these skins have just overwritten the defaults. There is a way to keep default and the other skins, but I haven't got that at the moment. And I can see the comments already. People be like, show me how to get the skins, where they come from. All a good time, boys. There'll be another video. So then you just start your lobby, and this is where you'll come to. So this is only for the host, the person in control. So now you can choose all the cars, pick whichever one you want, do whatever. Uh, there you go. It's fast becoming my f most favorite. It's great fun, the P3. But yeah, every time you finish a race, instead of having to exit and go all the way back out and everybody join back in, if you keep that set in on opponents to same class, that'll just keep all the cars available every time you come in and out. So then you can pick your track. All the tracks are there. And again, you can change all these settings while you're in this screen. Yeah? So... But you can't change that opponent setting. So you have to make sure you do that before you set up the server for everybody to join in. All right? Simple. Press start. Off you go. Do your race. Do your qualifying. Whatever. There's the info here. And then obviously other people join in. We'll get the, the normal bar at the top. So let's just uh, go back out. So if he was trying to join that lobby... It's not going to show because I can't host and join at the same time. But all you would do is you either give the invite from in that menu screen there or just tell your friends the name of the lobby, GB, save, and then when it finds it, it's not going to now, you click on it, it asks for the password, and in you go. Jobs are good. Huh? Anyway, guys, that's me over for the day. Uh, just a few quick tips. Help you get along. Enjoy.
Thank you very much.